What's the word, y'all? The LA Lakers were just eliminated from the playoffs by the Denver Nuggets. That is no surprise to any of us. I mean, we watched these two teams compete against each other in the conference finals where the Lakers had the best sweep of all time. And I thought they would get a game, and they did that. But ultimately, the Lakers ended up losing. Again, it's no surprise. The, the Denver Nuggets are the best team in basketball. The Lakers are a good team, not a great team. And a lot of that showed its face in here where majority of these games, this is this is why I would be so mad if I'm, if I'm LeBron James or even Lakers fans in general were in pretty much every single one of these games, you You've held a lead going into halftime. Hell, some of these games you held a lead going into the fourth quarter and you let all of them slip through your hands. I watched the Denver Nuggets, and again, I'm so very impressed. It's been years of me saying this, but I, I can't express it enough. I can't believe that Nikola Jokic, who in my opinion is, the, is one of the three clutchest players in all of basketball right now, definitely the clutchest big in basketball right now, is on the same court with Jamal Murray, who's one of the clutchest guards in basketball as well. So you're telling me we have two of the top clutch players in basketball surrounded by the best role player cast in hoops? It's hard to beat that team in a clutch situation. Jamal Murray had two of them things in this one series. These Lakers will have a 20-point lead, a 10-point lead, and then they'll go on a two-minute drought. And if they go through a two-minute drought, and you, you go through a two-minute drought, and you're going against the Denver Nuggets, you might as well wrap it up because them boys are not going to go through that same drought. It's going to be Michael Porter Jr. who played a phenomenal series. This man was playing out of his body. Of course, the three-point shooting and his tough shot making is part of him. In this game, I saw this man try to catch a body, and that body was LeBron James. I saw him throw a lob, try to throw a lob. It wasn't successful. Just stuff that Michael Porter Jr. don't be doing on the norm. He had all the confidence in the world. They instilled that in him. P. Watt hit a huge three in the corner to start the fourth quarter after the Lakers had gone on a little run. They just have so many players. So if they are in a close game, in a clutch game, you might as well call it a loss because this team is just the most... The, the best execution team in basketball. And the reason for that is something I've expressed. I don't know if this, it was on here or the Candy Beach Podcast. Link is in the description. Something I've expressed before is that all the times you get to the clutch, the way these teams play basketball, they say, forget the stuff that has worked for three and a half quarters. We're going to give it to our best player, or in this case, two best players in Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic and let them cook. And Nikola Jokic cooking is him being five feet away from the rim. And he's one of the most efficient finishers in basketball. You know how, like, and this is not a shot because Steph Curry just won clutch player of the year and he deserved it. But, like, a, a Steph Curry clutch shot is a 30-footer in a lot of cases. A super difficult shot that he makes a lot of the times. The big shot for Jokic is typically a layup, a floater. Or if it's not him, it's him giving up to Jamal Murray, who just is a tough shot maker. It makes no sense. And this is why, again, they should be the favorite to win a championship because it's, it's hard to, to beat this team. Before we go any further, I want to let you know that as of right now, this exact second, my brand Enjoy Basketball just dropped its spring collection. It includes these hats, which, again, are incredible. It includes this hoodie, which is my favorite hoodie of all time. I can't lie to you. So, And it's also a T-shirt. The link is in the description. They are always very, very limited. Shout out to the guys that put it together, the team at Enjoy Basketball. Get in before it is too late. Now, I think I got a lot of time to kind of think about Nuggets versus Wolves, which, man, it's going to be a series. Um, I'm going to think about it a bunch, go back and rewatch some of the games they played against each other, try to figure some stuff. I think my initial my initial prediction will be Nuggets in six. But, again, I got to go back before I give my, like, um, that was the unofficial. I got to go back and look before I give you my official one. But I kind of want to talk about the LA Lakers because anytime a team is eliminated, especially a team that's trying to compete for a championship, the first thing that comes to mind is what can you do? Like um, like the, the best teams in the league, like the Milwaukee Bucks, got eliminated in the first round last season. They tried, they acquired Damian Lillard. The Boston Celtics losing seven to the Miami Heat. What did they do? They brought in Drew Holiday and Chris Stasperzing. It's very normal for a championship quality team to try their best to improve their roster. And I think that's what the Lakers are going to try to do. I mean, Rob Palenka has said in multiple interviews right now that he's excited that they have three tradable first round picks this offseason. And I think they're going star hunting, which is just that's on brand for them. And in most cases, I would I would say I'm against it. Right. I feel like we've gone away from the big three era in, in basketball. You just saw what happened to the Phoenix Suns. But if this was different. It's not apples to apples. This was definitely different. But I think that we've kind of gone away from the big three era. But because of who the Lakers are and their star playing split player going to be 40 years old next season, it makes sense to try to get in another star to alleviate some of the pressure on LeBron James, right? The Suns' big three had so many overlapping talents that it made sense in real, like now, that it did not work out, right? You watch that team and say, oh, they needed a guard. Oh, they need a big man that they trust. Oh, they need this. They need that. Where if, you, if you're looking at the LA Lakers, and I don't know who's going to be available, right? Is it Trey Young? Is it Donovan Mitchell? Is it somebody else? I don't really know. But if you look at the landscape of their team and their two players, you got Anthony Davis, of course, doing most of his damage in the mid-range area slash in the paint. You got LeBron James. They can do it at all three levels. And I'm assuming that, again, they're trying to go after a Trey or a Dono if they flame out, whatever, whatever. And 
and that's like going to be a guard that can also score on all three levels that can add some other elements so i kind of understand it but i am still a little bit scared because in order to do this it'd have to be hachimura it'd probably have to be reeves d'angelo russell i don't know if he's opting in or whatever you're getting rid of all of your depth plus these three first round picks to make it happen and i just think we're kind of far away from the idea of having three max players and then the rest of the team being minimum guys and praying that one of the five minimum guys that you sign are gonna blossom and, and, and hit that's just i don't like the odds on that i mean if you look at the last couple championships i think it shows us that the big three ever was kind of ending because the nuggets of course again i mentioned one of the best can orchestrated or constructed team i've ever seen other than the 2017 warriors like that's it it's 2017 warriors it's nuggets like those teams are that crazily constructed perfectly around the star player the warriors of course a lot of continuity this is not a team that had no big three the bucks the lakers from 2020 which is like the perfect example of something i'm talking about and lebron being four years older kind of shifts some things for sure but this team won their championship based on Bron and AD being their star players and having Alex Caruso, having Cal Kuzma, having KCP, uh, oh, Dwight Howell, who was still giving you stuff throughout the course of the regular season and everything. They had multiple reliable players. And when you try to build a big three, you only have three in a lot of cases, sometimes four. But you're never going to get that five. And I feel like a championship team, when you look at the Nuggets, they have more than five players that you trust. Because I'm counting P1. I saw that big three in that corner when you were stopping the bleeding. You look at the last year Warriors team number one. They have multiple people that they really, really trusted to make a shot, to make a play, to do this. And if you just acquire another star, your top end talent is going to be great. But what happens after player number three? That's my scare. But also, to play devil's advocate with that, I, I mean, the alternative is you run it back. And that's what they did. They ran it back last season. It didn't work. So now we, can, we can't do that two times in a row. So again, I understand it. I just don't know if Trey Young or Donovan Mitchell or these guys are available for the trade package they have to offer. I just don't, I don't know. Time will tell. I think it would be important for LeBron James to show up to, uh, to USA Basketball and try to do a little bit of recruiting. I know no matter what, when I wake up in the morning and I turn on ESPN or whatever um, uh, TV network I'm going to be watching, the conversation is going to revolve around Anthony uh, LeBron James requesting a trade or moving on to his next team, especially considering Bronny might be hitting the draft. And two years ago, he told us that he wanted to play alongside Bronny and he was going to be on whatever team drafts Bronny. I don't really know. Um, it is crazy to see the 37 or 39-year-old give us 27, 8, and 6 in multiple games, be like the only threat in the fourth quarter. Austin Reeves definitely picked it up in the fourth quarter game number five. But ultimately, it was just a lot of LeBron James, especially after Anthony Davis had his, his shoulder injury. And Rob Palenka has built good basketball teams. I think that you saw the difference between a good basketball team and a great basketball team. And good basketball teams could can go on runs. We saw it last year. Uh, good basketball teams can defeat teams, but they need, in order to get to the NBA Finals, to potentially raise the Larry O'Brien Trophy, you need so much luck. You need injury luck. You need matchup luck. You need play or role players playing out of their body. You need a lot of different teams. I would argue that the Miami Heat team from last year that went in a run, that was a good team. They had a lot of that stuff. They had some injury luck. They had Kayla Martin playing like, I don't know who, who Michael Jordan in that series versus the Boston Celtics. They had good luck for a good team. But in order to be a great team or beat a great team, that's you, you need a lot more than that. And the Lakers are a good team. They're not a great team. You cannot run it back when the Western Conference has a lot of great teams competing. You know what I'm saying? And even in the year 2024, this team is still, still feeling the, the, I don't know, aftershock of the acquiring Russell Westbrook trade. They just are. And no, I am not blaming Russell Westbrook for the fact that the Lakers lost in the playoffs, okay? Please don't misinterpret what I am saying right now. But what I am saying is that this team was well-built and they went out to go acquire a star in Russell Westbrook and it failed. And, and that was in 2021. And even to this day, a lot of the pieces from this big old trade they are feeling the after effects from because they say, hey, okay, we did this. We washed our hands. It did not work out. So we're going to acquire Malik Beasley, who eventually ended up in, of course, uh, Milwaukee, Jerry Vanderbilt. And then they decided, this was the super interesting part. They got uh, D'Angelo Russell now too. The super interesting part of this is that they had an opportunity to go get Mike Conley, but instead opted to not bring in Mike Conley. Instead, Mike Conley ended up with Minnesota. This is a lot of different stuff. But I think all things considered, the recovery trade is good, right? You got good pieces in this one. But you still are feeling the effects of that. And I think that's how we get to the point we are right now. 
I don't know what's next for Braun or the LA Lakers or so on and so forth. They got a long offseason ahead of them. AD and LeBron are going to play Team USA. They got to do some recruiting <laughs> if they want to raise the Larry OB again. Um, but, man, it is very, very weird that there's no Kevin Durant, no Steph Curry, and no LeBron James for the rest of the playoffs. We won't see them play again until the Olympics. It's just different. We've seen those dudes dominate. We've seen these dudes dominate and get deep runs and championships and so on and so forth. Not anymore. I guess we're in a new era. It's the Anthony Edwards era. It's the Nikola Jokic era. It's somebody's era. Somebody else's era. And I feel like an old man saying that. 